what is a pangram a pangram is nothing but a special type of string which has all the letters of the english alphabet occurring at least once so it will have every letter a to z and they can be repeated multiple number of times but every letter will occur at least once once you understand this this problem becomes fairly simple to solve so let's see what we can do about it hello friends welcome back to my channel first i will explain the problem statement and we look at some sample test cases going forward we are going to start with the brute force approach and then try to see how we can come up with multiple optimal solutions after that we will also do a dry run of the code so that you can understand and visualize how all of this is actually working in action without further ado let's get started first of all let's try to make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly in this problem you are given a string and you have to check if it is a pangram now what is a pangram a pangram is just a special type of string which has all the characters of the english alphabet from a to z at least once so to understand it better let us look at our sample test case so in our test case number 1 i have this string right and you know that this is a very popular string which contains every letter of the english alphabet all the way from a all the way up to z right so for this particular test case you need to output true as your answer because you can find each and every character from a all the way up to z right similarly if you look at our second test case i just have a small string right and you can easily see that this will not have all the 26 characters so for this particular test case you need to output false as your answer because you cannot find all the different characters and hence this string is not a pangram so this problem is relatively very simple to understand so how do you go about solving it when you think about this problem in the most naive way what comes to your mind what you can do is you can start with each and every character you start with the character a and then you will try to find this character if you can find it in the string right you start traversing the string from the beginning and you see that hey you found an a so you are good right similarly what you're going to do is you will start with the next character and that is b once again you will start traversing your string and hey you found a b similarly you will do this for every character all the way up to the last character and that is z correct if you are able to find each and every character then yes this string is a pangram if at any moment you encounter a character let's say x and you do not find the character x anywhere in this string then this string will not be a pangram and you can return a false so technically this method is perfect and it will give you a correct answer each and every time but do you see the problem with this approach in this approach you are iterating the string again and again right try to think about it for every character you are starting from the beginning and going all the way up to the end what happens if your string is very large let's say you have 10000 characters then for every alphabet you have to traverse the entire string again and again right so this will waste so much of your time and hence this approach is not desirable and you will be asked to come up with a better or a improved solution so what do you do about it once again i have this sample string with me right and you know that the letters in the english alphabet are fixed you only have 26 characters correct so one approach that comes to your mind is okay what if somehow you can store hey what are the characters that i have already encountered so what are you going to do is just create an array of the size 26 so you see over here that i have an array that has a size 26 so you can see that the index 0 should correspond to the letter small a and the index 25 it will correspond to the letter z correct and once this array is initialized all of these values they will be set to 0 correct since this is an integer array so what you can do is you can start iterating your string character by character the first character that you encounter that is the character t right and t is the 20th character in your english alphabet given an array an array starts from 0 so that means this should appear at the index 19 right so what will happen technically is somewhere you will have a index 19 over here in your array right and its value will be also zero right now correct so as soon as you see the character t t is 20th position its index will be 19 so go on to the 19th position and change this value to 1 now move on to the second character 
the second character is h correct and h comes at the eighth position in the english alphabet eighth position means a seventh index and you will go at the seventh index in your array and currently its value would be zero once again right whatever be the value just change this value to one similarly what you're going to do is you will keep on doing this for each and every character for every character that you encounter just change the value in this array to one right now once you have iterated through this entire string if a character was present its value will have changed to one right and if a character was missing then you can never approach that index right think about it if this string did not have the character y then there is no way that this value would have changed to one correct and once you have completed the iteration of your entire string just look at your array once again if you find any value to be zero that means there was at least one character which did not occur in this string and hence you can say it to be false if you found all the values to be one that means you have encountered every character at least once and hence this string will be a pan graph right now this is a very efficient approach because you are iterating through the string only once but there can be some cases where the interviewer asks you that hey can you even optimize this problem even further try to think what happens if you get a string that looks something like this you could have all the letters of the english alphabet a b c d all the way up to z and then once again you have all the characters a b c all the way up to z and then once again you have a b c all the way up to z and this is repeated several times so what will happen in this case you will encounter each character one by one right and once you are done with the character z you have already filled up your entire array and all of the numbers are one correct but you have all of this string still remaining you will have to parse this entire string there is no way that you can check hey am i already done so in those kind of edge cases you can try to come up with an even efficient approach and that is where we can try to use a hash fed how does a hash fed work if you're new to hash feds i would highly recommend you to check out my video on hash fed first because that way you will be able to understand it even better so coming back to our problem once again i have my sample string with me right now the purpose of a hash fed is that you cannot have any duplicates in a hash fed correct so what i can do is i can create an alphabet set and in that alphabet set i will add every character i will add all the characters from a all the way up to z right so in this hash fed now i have every character and what i will do is i will start i treating this string character by character once again the first character is t right so just look in your hash fed and remove the character t t is gone right now move on to the next character and that is h once again go in your hash fed and remove the character h now the next character is e go in your hash fed and remove the character e so what is happening with every character you will go in your hash fed and try to remove it if the character exists well and good the character will get removed if not then okay no worries it is a hash fed and it does not matter right but there is a neat advantage over here what you can do is after removing every character you can check if your hash fed is empty because think about it if i have the same string with me that is a b c all the way up to z and then once again a b c all the way up to z and this is repeated several times as soon as i encounter all the characters that means as soon as i am at this position i will have removed every character in my hash fed right and if i check that hey is my hash fed empty then i no longer need to process all of this remaining string right so that is saving me some time and hence i would recommend the approach of using this hash fed because it looks neat and clean and it saves you some time as well so based upon this approach now let us quickly do a dry run of the code and see how it works in action on the left side of your screen you have the actual code to implement this solution and on the right i have my sample string that is passed in as an input parameter to the function check if pan graph oh and by the way this complete code and its test cases are also available on my github profile you can find the link in the description below so moving on to the dry run what is the first thing that we do first of all we create a hash fed that will contain all the characters right and as soon as i create this set what i will do 
I will try to add all of my characters all the way from the small a and all the way up to capital C. So once this loop executes, my set will be complete, right? You can see that it has all the characters from A all the way up to Z, right? Now moving on, we start a for loop. And in this for loop, we iterate over each character one at a time, correct? And for every character, what do I do? I remove this character from my set, right? So when I encounter T, I will try to remove T from my set. T gets removed, right? I will do this for every character. And at any instance, if this alphabet set is empty, that means I have encountered every character and I can simply return true as my answer. If this loop completes and I still have remaining characters in my hash set, that means this string was not a pangram and I'm going to return a false. The time complexity of this solution is order of n because you have to iterate through the entire string in your worst case and the space complexity of this solution is order of 1 because it needs a constant space of only 26 characters. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that these type of problems are fairly simple. But it is always a good idea to make sure about all the edge cases. Just try to find out from your interviewer or when you're reading the problem statement, try to find out if this problem is case sensitive. Is a small a and a capital A treated as different characters? It could also be a good idea that you can ask what is the domain of all of your characters? Do you have to include any of the special characters as well? Sometimes there could be a problem that, okay, what are all the keys of the keyboard? And then try to construct a pangram. So just keep all of these small things in mind and then these problems will be really easy to solve. So while going through this video, did you face any problems? Or have you seen any other such problems which talk about a new concept and once you understand it, the problems become very easy. So tell me everything in the comment section below and it will be helpful for anyone else who is watching this video. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also let me know what other type of problems you want me to solve next. Should I start creating more playlists? Should I start focus on a specific type of problems? Do let me know. Until then, see ya.